So we are gathered again for another session uh, for another online coaching and sharing uh, by Brian uh, on the topic of getting started in creative writing. How many times uh, we struggle to write uh, not just a, a message, a letter, but something that would uh, uh, be uh, special, unique, and uh, personal touch to it. So Brian today will uh, share some tips and will help us uh, improve our personal writing skills. Uh, Brian is um, head of a workplace lifestyle cluster of, uh, of business uh, uh, BFC Green. So um, and I advise you also to check it out. Thank you. And uh, Brian, all the sin is yours. Alrighty, well, thank you very much for Colleen. He always gives a great introduction. Um, and thank you all very much for being here and being able to join us as well. Um, as you can see from Colleen's introduction and from my first screen, we're gonna be talking about getting started in creative writing. And um, it shouldn't go quite as long as uh, the last session did on the history of the English language. But nonetheless, let's just jump into it. Hopefully we can inspire your uh, creative writing passion and uh, we'll get you wanting to uh, write a little bit more creatively as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, now, before we jump into creative writing, I wanted to talk a little bit about how writing began, uh, why it began, and uh, you can kind of see how it evolved from there. Um, we're not going to get too into it because that would, uh, well, that would be another presentation all by itself. Um, but writing began um, for, for our purposes here in ancient Sumer, a part of Sumeria. Um, now, it's said that it began independently in different other, other locations, such as in China. Um, but we're going to talk about uh, Sumer here because this is uh, what's really important to us. Um, and the reason it began is because it was the, really the first true urban civilization in the area. Um, and as you can see here, there's a temple, and it served also not only as a temple for worship and religion, uh, but also as a warehouse where they stored grains and um, other goods. Uh, they were constantly coming in and coming out, and because of that, uh, they needed some way to keep track of it. So they started writing. So we have this a uh, lovely little man here whose job was to write things down as a scribe and keep track of what's coming in and what's going out and how much they have of grains and fish and all these other wonderful things. Um, you can see here, uh, the first writing was very simple. Uh, it was actually just a picture and some tally marks uh, just to keep track of things. Um, we've obviously come a long way since then from this picture. It slowly developed uh, from you can see on the left over here from being this picture or drawing to something that's a little bit more abstract and then on the right by the time you get to the right hand side it's even more abstract um, so it was really the process of abstraction that uh, helped us develop uh, writing and along with that there was also the process of compounding so you hear you have a a sickle over here grain and that came to represent someone who was working the land or a farmer um, so these concepts eventually began to come together the both what you see here the abstraction and then the compounding and eventually writing became uh, symbols became um, not just symbols for particular words but they were also for particular syllables and eventually that became into um, them being symbols for uh, letters and, and an alphabet in general um, so that's just a little bit of background for how writing actually began and how we started this wonderful thing that would eventually evolve into creative writing. Uh, now there are four basic purposes of writing, and it's important to remember that uh, you can use multiple purposes together. You don't have to just do one, but there's four main purposes for, for basic purposes of writing, I should say. Uh, the first one that we'll talk about here quick is narrative writing. Uh, and what this is, is it tells a story. An example of this would be, um, you know, you went on your last vacation and you're writing a letter home and you're telling what happened on your vacation. You're telling a story uh, about what happened to you and your family and your friends or the random hotel guy that you had this crazy adventure with. An example of this, another example of this would be Life of Pi by uh, Jan Martel. If you haven't read it, it's a wonderful book and it tells a fascinating story. Uh, so I highly recommend that one. Uh, Life of Pi uh, also uses what's called descriptive writing. And what it does is it simply describes something. It's a person, a place, a thing. A great example of this can be a travel book that's describing, um, you know, maybe you want to go to 
the, uh, the pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, and it's describing and giving an impression of not only how the pyramid looks, but what it feels like when you touch it and uh, what it smells like in the air and the sounds that you hear around you um, when you're actually there. And it's trying to give you an impression of what it's like to be there. Um, so another example of this might could be something like a travel book uh, that's describing things, not only giving information, but also describing things. Um, travel books are also likely to give you information, which is our third form here. It's called expository writing, um, which is just straight information or explanations. Um, an example of this would be an article uh, about the history of the English language. Um, just giving you background information. It's not really detailing much. It's not giving you much description. It's not. It might be telling a little bit of a story, but not very much. It's mostly just for informational purposes. A uh, great example of this is uh, if you've been following my lifestyle cluster, uh, you'll know I'm a big fan of Bill Bryson. He's actually from Iowa, uh, where I grew up and um, spent most of my childhood. Uh, it's his book, A Short History of Nearly Everything. And all it is is about a thousand pages of in information and explanations um, about everything from how the cosmos works to chemistry, biology, physics, anything. Um, <laughs> it's it quite literally is a short history of nearly everything. Um, so uh, it's a wonderful examination of how informational writing can also be somewhat creative. Uh, because it is a very interesting read. Uh, it's not just very dry like you're reading a textbook. Um, a textbook is also another uh, great example of expository writing. Um, our last uh, basic purpose of writing is uh, persuasive writing, and that's an attempt to convince someone to do or think something. Um, a great example of this that come, came to mind when I was making the PowerPoint presentation um, today was uh, an article for of, for excuse me, an article of why to vote for or against someone. You know, we just came off the election in the United States, and uh, that's about all I saw for about a year or a year and a half was a, a lot of persuasive writing telling me why I should or shouldn't uh, vote for someone. Another great example, this is a, another example from America, is actually the Declaration of Independence. Um, it obviously declared our independence from Britain, but it also listed why, and it was trying to persuade people like these are the reasons we should be our own country. As I mentioned before, um, these can all be used um, and combined in different ways whenever you're telling something. So obviously when you're uh, writing a narrative, when you're telling a story, you're going to be doing descriptive writing. You might even have to do a little expository writing or persuasive writing. Um, obviously at BFC, uh, most of what we do is with our reports is expository writing. We're simply giving the information, um, explaining what happened, and then moving on from there. We do also do a little bit of persuasive writing. Excuse me a little bit of persuasive writing uh, when we give our recommendations and we're trying to um, kind of nudge the client or donor in the right direction um, or what we think is the right direction i should say um, but it's mostly just expository writing that we're doing um, and we tend to stay away from narrative writing and descriptive writing which are tend to be the more creative um, writing outlets um, so let's examine a little bit of actually what creative writing is um, it's a writing that expresses the thoughts and feelings in a fun and imaginative way. Um, it's often considered very poetic, even if it's not a poem. Um, it's, it's also something that we call prose. Um, it's something that's more uh, expressive, we'll put that way. Um, and it's creative writing is guided by the need to express your feelings and ideas instead of the more formal and restrictive way of typing some um, technical piece of writing um, and the technical pieces of writing that we tend to do at BFC every day. Um, it kind of goes beyond that and it, it touches more into who you are as a person, what your thoughts are, what your feelings are, and explores that much more. Um, another way to think about it is that you have all this stuff in your head, this crazy stuff, and all you're doing is simply trying to organize it in a structured way and get it written down so that other people can follow it. Um, now I realize a lot of you probably don't write too much more with a pen and paper, so it might have been better to use this example instead, because uh, I think we all do that much more of our writing on a computer nowadays instead of a pen. But either way, it's the ba same basic concept. We're trying to get all this craziness into some sort of structured form uh, that helps not only other people understand us better, but it helps ourselves understand our, us better. Um, so let's look at some reasons of, for why we should write creatively. You may be asking yourself sitting here, well, what's the point? What do I need to be doing here? Um, creative writing at its, at its essence is simply a way to discover the world and a way to discover yourself. A lot of the creative writing I do for myself 
is uh, a way for me to think about any problems or decisions that I'm trying to make. Um, a lot of the creative writing I do, I actually don't share with anyone. I just, I don't, sometimes I don't even save it. It's just uh, a way of thinking, a way of exploring. Um, and it's been a great way for me personally to discover more about who I am. Um, tied into that, uh, creative writing gives us personal freedom and uh, it's a way to save ourselves. And I like to say this, it's a way to save ourselves from ourselves. Um, often when we write things down and when we explore our thoughts and feelings creatively, it's a way for us to not bottle up what we're feeling. I think we've discovered throughout history when people tend to bottle up what they're feeling, their emotions, their feelings, their ideas, uh, they tend to come out in more explosive, maybe inappropriate or uh, not the best ways possible. Um, writing gives you that outlet. Creative writing gives you that outlet to be able to vent frustration, to vent anger, to explore happiness, to explore everything that the world has to offer. Um, so it's this huge, huge personal freedom and it's a way to discover yourself and to discover the world and what you think about the world. Uh, a lot of the big decisions I've actually made in my life personally have um, come about because I've not written specifically about them, but I've thought about them while I was writing. Um, and then I went back and read my writing and it led me to the conclusions that have made my life what it is today. And uh, that's been a very positive impact on me. So I, I would hope that if you get involved in creative writing, that it will be something that you find positive as well. Um, the other one that I didn't list here is creative writing can actually help your other writing, your more technical writing. Uh, you gain a larger vocabulary and you start thinking about things slightly different ways. So, for example, if I want to emphasize a, a certain part of a text, maybe I'll write it a little bit differently, a little more creatively to uh, draw people's attention to it. Uh, so it can have a very real impact in uh, a, a business setting, not just in the creative world or the artsy world. Um, so now this is the, the point of what we've been talking about here is actually getting started in creative writing. Uh, so how do you actually get started? Um, the first thing you need to do is know some genres and some sub-genres of writing um, and explore them a little bit. Uh, you need to find out what you like, what your interests are in, and where your natural uh, tendencies and natural strengths lie. Um, so, for example, do you enjoy poetry? Do you enjoy uh, romance novels, westerns, uh, science fiction, um, political fantasy, like uh, Lord of the Rings, something like that? I, you need to find what your passions are for genres. Uh, once you find the ones that you enjoy, that you like, choose one. Um, I know it seems fairly simple, but uh, it's often something that a lot of writers struggle with when they first get started. Uh, they don't choose one, they try and do a little bit of everything. If writing poetry isn't your strength and it isn't something you're interested in, please don't write poetry. Find something that you enjoy, that you feel comfortable with, that you like and go write that. If you don't like writing horror, don't write horror. Write a Western if that's what you want. Write a mystery, write you know something else that's of interest to you, that gives you personal fulfillment. Uh, the last thing is to write regularly. And by regularly, I mean daily. Um, even if you don't feel like writing, if you can find five to 10 minutes to write every day, even if you don't think your writing's good, it will help you practice, it will help you develop, it will help your mind think. Um, and it will keep you in that attitude of being able to write. Um, perhaps attitude is not the right way, um, but in that mode of being able to write. Um, so write daily, write daily, write daily. I'm going to stress that again later on in the presentation, but write daily. Um, and here are some of the big tips and tricks uh, for getting started with creative writing. One is, like with anything, you have to train. Um, you can't just sit down and bam, you're, you're this great wonderful literary genius. Um, everybody has to write. Who's a writer has to write. Uh, I, I just had a professor tell me that in uh, college, that um, writers write. And it seems so simple, but um, if you're going to be a creative writer, you need to write every day. And think about it like uh, if you were an athlete, you'd have to train every day. If you were you know, uh, playing in the National Basketball Association, for example, you train every day, your body, uh, train your writing, train your mind. It's, it's very, something that's very helpful and often overlooked when people try and get started in creative writing. Uh, the next one is have a notebook with you. Um, if it's at all possible, take something with you to jot down things that you hear around you. 
Um, often when I'm walking around, I'll hear people say things in interesting ways that I hadn't haven't heard them expressed before. I'll like it, but chances are I'll forget that by the time I get home. If I have a notebook with me, I can jot it down. And if you don't want to take a notebook with you, we all have smartphones now. I think most of us do. There's tons of uh, memo pad apps that you can just quickly write something down. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Maybe there's uh, some smell that reminds you of something like, oh, I want to write about that, or a sound, or something unique happens. Um, it'll be a great way for you to put the little details that you might otherwise forget. Um, and so since we have the modern technology, there's no excuse for you not to have something to be able to write down with you. Uh, the next little tip here is to try and find the time of day that's best for you. Um, do some exploration with this. Try writing in the morning. Try writing in the evening. I mean, a lot of writers find it easier to write in the morning because they're not thinking about everything that they have to do in the day. But some people feel more relaxed and after they get home from work, for example, um, they have time to eat and relax and they feel good about themselves, they feel more creative, do some exploration. Try finding five or 10 minutes here, five or 10 minutes there, and maybe five or 10 minutes you know, later on in the day and feel what's best for you and try and make that time at, at the time when you're feeling the most creative. It's very important and often um, overlooked. Uh, the next important tip here we have is that it's okay to make mistakes. Um, you don't always have to be correct when you write and that's because it, no matter what you write, no matter if you write something absolutely perfectly, um, you're going to have to come back and edit it, most likely. I can't think of the number of times I've written something that I thought was beautifully worded and expressed a great sentiment. And I came back and I reread it. And I thought it was still beautifully worded, but it wasn't quite what I was trying to say. So I had to edit it down. But the essence of what I wanted to say was there. So don't try and make things perfect when you're going the first time. Don't worry about it. It's okay to make mistakes. Just keep going. Um, the important thing is to make sure you've got your uh, creative juices flowing and that you're letting those out. Um, you can come back and edit later. Um, and the last, and I think this is probably the most important tip, is have fun. Uh, writing should be something that's very fun. Um, sometimes you can end up feeling, especially if you're making yourself do it for five or 10 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour or you know, two hours every day, however long you decide. Um, it can end up feeling like it's something that you have to do and it's boring and you don't want to do it. Um, writing should be fun. Creative writing should be fun. Uh, so if you find yourself in a position where you're not having fun with it, stop whatever you're writing. If you don't want to write that poem, don't write that poem. Work on something else. Work on something where when you get done working on it, you can sit back read it and you get fulfillment out of it. That's that's the important, having fun and having that sense of fulfillment when you're done with writing. Um, that's the biggest thing I've taken away from my own personal writing. Um, and I thought it might be nice to give some facts about creative writers as well. Uh, so I guess these are kind of an extension of the tips and tricks, but uh, the first one is to read. Creative writers read, um, they read creative writing. So if you're interested in writing, um, for example, science fiction, read science fiction, read a lot of it. Um, it'll give you inspiration. It'll give you an idea for what's expected in the genre and what's not expected um, for you to be able to work your unique voice in. Um, and I mean, I don't think I have to tell any of you uh, the benefits of just reading in general. It keeps your mind active, gives you new words, new vocabulary, and um, gives you different ways of thinking about things. So. Even if you're not going to be a creative writer, read. Um, the next uh, fact here is that creative writers write each day, e even a little bit. Um, like I said, five to 10 minutes. I think we all can find five or 10 minutes to sit down and write a little bit. Even if you're tired, uh, you can still probably come up with something. Um, it's very, very important if you want to write creatively to write every day or almost every day. If you want to take one day off, I, I suppose that's OK. Um, when you're trying to explore your creativity, it's uh, important to remember that creative writers are not born, they're made. Um, and this is, goes back to what we touched on earlier, that uh, you have to train. It's not something that you're born with. You might have um, uh, an aptitude for something, and you might have more natural talents for writing, but you still have to work at it. You still have to shape, be shaped, and shape yourself. 
Um, so when you get first get started, don't try not to get uh, frustrated with yourself if you think that you're not very good. Keep working at it. Um, every writer has to work at it, no matter if they're the greatest writer in the world or if they're just learning how to write. They have to work at it to get better. Um, which brings us into the next point here: practice, practice, practice. Um, that goes back to the, to the the second point as well. Write every day. Um, it's the only way you're going to get better at creative writing and it's going to give you more ideas for how to shape things. Um, be playful with your writing too. Um, try new things, try different things, see if it works, see if it doesn't work. If you want to have someone else read it and say, Hey, uh, this is what I'm trying to express. Do you think that works? Um, if you feel comfortable with that, if you don't feel comfortable about that, uh, having someone else read it, um, read it yourself and say, um, maybe maybe I should try it this way. Maybe I should try it that way. Play around and practice. So um, it's very important. And I touched on this point earlier, but also have fun with your writing. I know I can't say that enough. Right? Creative writing should be something that's very very fun. Uh, I think we can take an example here. I know this is a really silly example, but uh, from Calvin and Hobbes, um, he's, he has to write about explaining Newton's uh, first law of motion in his own words, and he gets this idea. And as you can see, he writes Yaka Fub Mok and a little bit more ending with Chumbo Spoos. Um, but you can see the look on his face when he gets done. I realize, again, that this is a silly example, but um, he's having fun with his writing. And even though he's obviously not fulfilling what, what the requirement is for the test, he's getting personal enjoyment out of it. And it's something that's meaningful to him, um, even if it is something a little bit ridiculous. Uh, so the last thing here before we, we get to the last uh, last slide and any questions you have, um, I just want to give you some resources for things that might help you getting started with creative writing. Uh, one is called uh, a book called On Writing Well by William Zenzer. And it's basically, uh, it offers the fundamental principles and some insights, insights from distinguished writers uh, that is a great, great resources for anybody who is a writer or wants to be a writer. So it doesn't matter if you're um, one of the best writers in the world or if you're just getting started. This book will probably have something uh, to help you out. The next one is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Um, and it's a great book about creativity in general, and it offers some insights into particularly her creative process. Um, but it might inspire you as well with um, things that might give you inspiration and finding your own creativity. Uh, the next is a website called study.com. Um, in particular, they have a, a post on their uh, 25 helpful websites for creative writers. Uh, these include uh, like general writing tips, uh, ideas for things to write about, um, grammar for anyone who's concerned about fixing their grammar, um, and then it has some writing forums, and then uh, tips on getting published if you want to go that far. And the last resource that I have to offer, I use it all the time. It's absolutely fantastic. I even use it with my work um, for editing with BFC, uh, thesaurus.com. It's great when you need to find that perfect word and like you're not sure of the, you know there's a word out there that's perfect, but you can't quite think of it. You can only think of something similar. Uh, go to the thesaurus.com, plan it in there and get some results. Very easy to use and gives you a ton of different options so you can find that right word. Uh, it'll help expand your vocabulary and um, help you find words that are going to make your writing more interesting so you're not using the same ones over and over again. Uh, so with that, I hope that I've inspired you to get started a little bit in creative writing. Um, even if it's not in English, if you want to you know, start with your creative writing in another language, it's something that's going to, find, uh, going to be beneficial for you. And um, I hope even if you don't share your writing that you'll at least write for yourself. It's something that will be very, very important. So. Thank you uh, very much for your time today. I really appreciate you being here. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer those. I think we've got a few minutes left. Uh, first of all, thank you for the brilliant presentation, but could you send uh, in chat the titles of the, the books which you have advised? Yeah, um, this presentation will be going up on the lifestyle cluster. I think um, it usually takes a little bit before it will get posted. But then um, I'll be happy to post those books and those links within that too, so you can just click and go find them. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to, reach out to me in a message, and I'll send them to you in okay. private as well. 
And uh, uh, sorry, the, the last question is: uh, Are there any special uh, tips and tricks uh, for non-native speakers? If you speak about creative writing in English, or it just depends on the, the level of English. In, I mean, uh, it, it depends. It, it depends on each person. Um, I actually I enjoy reading or reading and listening to non-native speakers because they phrase things sometimes in different ways that are much more creative than a native speaker would be. Uh, so I would encourage you to play around with English. English is a very playful language. I know it doesn't seem like it is all the time, especially when you're doing technical writing, but it can be very, very playful. Um, I remember I have one friend who is from an, a native Moldovan and she couldn't remember the word for cold, so she kept saying the word frosty. And I thought that was just absolutely brilliant. And she's like, it's so frosty outside and it, it works so perfectly. And I remember it to this day and it's something that I took from her. So um, feel free to explore the language. I think that's the most important thing. Play around, see if, it, if, if you're not sure if it works, ask someone who's a native English speaker or someone who you think speaks English better than you or understands it better and say, well, what's your understanding of this if I write this this way? Um, it's, it's a great, great fun for me. Um, and I would be happy to, to look at it too, but just play around, be playful, be happy, have fun, uh, and don't worry, uh, just just write, just go for it. Uh, thank you, Brian, very much for the great presentation, for encouraging uh, all of us for writing, uh, for in, uh, sharing uh, resources uh, that I'm sure that will help uh, all of us to um, become better writers. And um, also the tips and tricks, um, I think, were great, you know, that we could just take them and uh, apply. And even though, like, as you said, in our uh, day, daily uh, activities, we don't uh, write uh, maybe like novels, and, but I think all the, most of those tips that you advised could be applied also in our business as well. Um, I just have one question. Uh, you mentioned that we could. Uh, um, it one of the tips would be to carry like the notebook with us or use the uh, online applications. In your opinion, uh, which uh, is more preferable? Or, like, uh, is better like writing on the paper or writing on on a screen or like on a phone or on notebooks? Um, it's personal to, to each person. It depends upon what you like more. Um, I prefer, like I carry, I just carry my phone with me because it's easy, it's convenient. Um, and I do almost all my writing on a computer because I like to change things a lot and go back and delete. And um, I probably torture my writing a little bit more than I should by um, going back and changing things a lot and restructuring. Um, but that's just me personally. Some people would prefer to have that feel of having a pen in their hand and, and watching the ink. Um, I would encourage people to try both and see which one they like more. Um, don't think of it just as a matter of convenience, but think of it as something that um, gives you the more, what gives you more inspiration? What, where, where do you feel like you're more creative? Because um, creative writing is all about feelings um, and expressing yourself. So uh, try and find the mode that helps you best express yourself. Um, also, like uh, you mentioned a few times, that um, sometimes that when you write, you don't uh, how do you say you don't uh, share it, right? This mm -hmm. works with your colleagues or I mean your lo loved ones. Uh, is this? Um, I mean, um, don't you think that when you share, you try to write maybe in other way? I mean, wh why you do that? I mean, is it because uh, you can be more open? In writing, or what? Uh, why sharing versus non sharing is uh, is uh, is better? Uh, that's also a very personal uh, matter. I don't not just for me, but I mean for everyone. They have to decide what to share and what not to share. Um, I do share some stuff with friends and, and family. Uh, I, it tends to be not a lot of it. Um, the reasons are like writing for me is a way of thinking about things and a way of letting things out and trying to figure out how I feel and what I think. Um, like I said, I'm, I mean, I, I think a lot of you know that I would, did the Peace Corps and while I was thinking about Peace Corps, I was writing and I went back and read my writing and it helped me to make my decision to join the Peace Corps, um, but I never shared that with anyone. I think that's actually on my old computer and I might have even deleted it, um, but it's, 
That's just not me. Um, if you if you feel that you want to share, I mean, share with people. It's I encourage both. Both just write. That's that's my main thing. Thank you. Right. I'm I'm sure like maybe one day you will publish your you will publish your uh, memories in uh, Beast Corps and also in uh, others and I'm sure that they will be amazingly just knowing how how well you write. And Thank final you. question, promise this is the last one from me. Uh, when uh, there are like writing, not writing, but before people write, some of them I know that they dictate, right? They dictate and then mm -hmm. they uh, keep uh, uh, putting that on paper. Uh, in your opinion, is this an uh, effective technique or uh, did you try it? Um, I've tried to pre-structure my writing before. I guess I think that's what you're, you're really saying. Um, I can't do it. It never works out. I, it's just part of my writing style. It works for some people and you'll have to figure out what works for you. Um, my own personal writing is almost stream of consciousness. I just start writing and then I go back and read and edit. And then based on that, I start writing more and it's this constant process where I'm kind of moving down two steps, moving up one step, moving down two steps, moving up one step. And that's usually how I go through my writing. Um, but that's just my style and what works for me and what I like. I've, like I said, I've tried doing more structured, um, but every time I've tried it, by the time I start writing, it just ends up, I end up going on a far different path than I thought I was going to be. So it, it's not useful for me personally. But some people I know find it absolutely helpful. They love it. And if you're going to be writing something longer, like a novel, you need, you know, you need to at least have something, some idea and some general sketch of where you want to go and what, who the characters are. So, I mean, there's balance there too. Even for me, if, if I'm going to write something longer, then uh, I'll need at least a rough, rough, rough outline. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Anyone would like to uh, ask um, maybe some I tips just or have one, some one question. One question. Because um, <clears throat> creative writing is differently seen here in in our in my region. The question is: Is creative writing an art or a craft? <laughs> Um, I would say it's an art. Um, I think that. But you, you, but you said you were not born but made. Even though that we you know, do do we have anxious for the white paper? Um, I would say that artists aren't born either; that they're also made. I think it's a combination. Maybe that's a better way of putting it. There, I mean, you still have to be taught how to paint. You still have to be taught how to draw. Um, and I think it depends upon how creative you are and how much you want to go. Um, I don't think everyone was created equal, but I think everyone needs uh, training to write creatively. I don't know if I'm making sense right now. I understand. Yes, yes. It's, but, but normally here it's saying, because perhaps of uh, our tradition we are from, in, in Germany, it's been against, um, or from romanticism, as you know, that we can, that was the genius idea of a genius it means you're born with that and you cannot mate someone. And that means kind of mm -hmm. just start, uh, go ahead. And you, you mentioned the stream of conscious, like with James Joyce, just going ahead and you will be at next, the next James Joyce. And we said, no, not possible at all. You can write and write, but you can always, you will never reach this level. So that's kind of the, the difference between. Um, sure. James Jones and me, for instance. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, I, under, I think there's a balance to it. I think even the, you know, a genius needs to be prompted a bit and needs to have exposure to it and needs some sort of training. But it's the same, you know, if you look at athletes, um, you know, people are more have more inclination to be, a, you know, a basketball player and they have more natural talent. Maybe that's the better way of looking at it. They have more natural talent, but they still have to train. They still have to learn. Um, and I think writing is similar. I think some people have more natural talent, um, but I think that everyone can at least learn some basics. And I think even the people that have the natural talent have to go through some training or have to train themselves. We'll put it that way. Because, you know, there's also a violation here and saying, okay, uh, that's, that's coming from the United States. We say, oh, again, the creative writing schools. It means anyone <laughs> starts with creative writing, and then they just but they are not William Faulkner. So you know that is the uh, issue here. Yeah, but you will write. It's kind of uh, because but you, what you said, uh, expository, expository, uh, expository work or descriptive work mm -hmm. is, is different, of course, uh, and technical writing at BOC is different, and just uh, 
starting to, to write in you, Finnegan's Wake. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, it depends upon your goal with creative writing. I mean, I'm encouraging people to write mostly for themselves. And I think that some of what we're talking about now is uh, commercial or, you know, getting published. Mm -hmm. um, and I think creative writing for yourself is important in and of itself. And I think that's where, you know, the sort of anybody can write motto uh, comes along. And mm -hmm. I think that's the American perspective of it's, it's an, just it's important in and of itself, even if you don't go anywhere with it. Yeah, that's what I said. Saving, you saving saving your it's your your view of the world and saving mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, and getting structured, perhaps. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, questions here? I think we're probably past time. Yes, yeah, we have few, we went a bit a uh, few minutes over, but the discussion and turned to be very interesting. Anyone would like to ask Brian, please feel free. Uh, yes, just a small question. Mm -hmm. you writing your diary might be a good way to start. Uh, I think so. If it's some, especially if it's something that you do every day and you make yourself do it uh, every day. Um, it's going to train you probably more towards narrative writing, um, but you're going to at least practice. I would also encourage you to um, expand a little bit beyond that and try other things. Um, I talked about exploring genres and subgenres. Um, try exploring other ways of writing, but if all you want to do is write in your diary, I mean, that's going to be helpful as well. Um, in the end, what, what I think of creative writing is a, a way of helping you understand the world and help you understand yourself. Um, and a diary is a, a wonderful way to do that. And I think it's a great start to it. I would just encourage anyone who's interested in in it, uh, pushing themselves further beyond that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank you uh, Tian. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it's really interesting. And I think we could stay uh, uh, hours discussing it because uh, I think this is a subject that is interesting for, for all of us and uh, I'm personally, as I mentioned, and uh, Brian also knows that I'm struggling to write mm -hmm. well and uh, it's one of the goals uh, and I hope that uh, I will one day I will be, okay, not the, the great author but at least read after that what i written and be, uh, the, I mean, happy with it. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for participation. Thank you, Brian, and uh, we're looking forward for your new, uh, your future um, coaching sessions and uh, sharing of uh, some techniques and uh, um, in in your uh, BC Green cluster. Thank you. Um, next week we plan to have. Uh, Another session with uh, Ma Matthew Marwick. Uh, it will be on March 9th. Uh, Matthew will host um, the story of the narr narrative um, uh, session. Uh, so he will uh, share with us um, uh, how we communicate. Uh, also, to, uh, he will help us to underpin creative works. Um, so we invite everyone. Uh, to participate in uh, on March 9, and um, looking forward to to see you coming. Thank you very much.